So a crisis that really does rise to the level of being a crisis mm -hmm. is if your child has been arrested. Right. And that can either take place at school mm -hmm. or on school grounds. Right. Or it could be totally unrelated to school altogether. Sure. But let's address the fact if your child has been arrested at school. And I'll tell you, this happens in several ways. Sometimes the child has had a behavior that's risen to the level that the people at school just don't know what to do. Right. So they call the police. Right. Or sometimes the child does something at school. And in many schools, there are police already in, right, on in the, the premises, mm -hmm. okay, um, and resource so, officers, and we have right in the building. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and I and I see this all the time. So, Jen, let's break those down okay. into the two categories: if it happens at school or on school premises, and then you know, totally unrelated to school. Why is it important, and what you should, what should you do if your child's arrested at school? Okay, and so the distinction from the statute isn't just on school grounds, but also right. at school sponsored activities. So okay. right. when it when it triggers that obligation of the school or the the right of the school to discipline the student because right. of whatever the the misconduct was. Right. Um, well, then, you know, let's just say you have a basketball game and it's not even in the town you reside in, but it could be at a, at a school sponsored basketball game. Right. And uh, the student gets arrested there. That actually right. would trigger these discipline provisions of the statute. Right. So so those those two things are important to keep in mind because if, if it happens at school or at a school sponsored activity, then the school district certainly is within their rights to trigger the procedures as long as they follow the protocols. And it gets into a question of whether or not this student should be expelled or suspended based on the misconduct of because it's hard to imagine many crimes that would not also be a violation of a school policy, right. okay, or right. a conduct policy. So generally, if a crime was committed, you know, one could think of some that aren't, but it's hard pressed to think of one right. that wouldn't also be a violation of the school district's code of conduct. So assuming that's the case, then we get into all the discipline procedures, which are, we know are okay. really complex. And it, it may then be a matter of this student may be expelled. And in many, many cases, the police department actually has a procedure and a protocol, and there are laws on the books in, in certain places Right. about this and procedures where if a student gets arrested, the police department notifies the school district that okay. the child was arrested even if it didn't happen as school-sponsored right. activity. So, you know, then you're getting into questions of of discipline. Okay. The problem with that, and what I say to parents, if, if I'm called because there's a potential discipline issue for a client who has special needs and who has also arrested, is from my view, it's much more important that the, ch the child's criminal rights and their right to right. not go to jail, okay, and right. if they didn't do this or if they the state doesn't meet its burden, that's far more important in my view than whether or not the student gets disciplined in school, okay? Right. I mean, an expulsion pales in comparison right. for most people to jail time. So I, I have to be cautious and say, look, you need to be careful because what the student says in the context of a meeting with the school or an expulsion hearing could be used against them in a criminal proceeding. And, you know, people have the right to remain silent, okay, right. so Fifth Amendment right. So you have to make sure that you're cautious about that, right? right? So that's if it's definitely happening at school. Okay, but can I just really okay, back, back in for yeah. one second here? What's the bottom line on what the parent has to do? What is that first step when they get the phone call that your child has been arrested at school? It's very important to understand all that sure. wonderful background information that you gave us. The first step is to handle the criminal piece. So you okay. either get a public defender or you, if you're in a position to do so, you hire a criminal defense attorney for your child. Uh, <sighs> that's what I would say is the first step. Okay. It's more important than your relationship with the school district. Okay. In all likelihood, the next move vis-a-vis -vis your school district isn't going to be yours. It's going to be the school district's. Okay. And they're going to notice a meeting that they want to have where they're going to probably want to take certain disciplinary action. Right. And that's called a manifestation determination IEP meeting. And basically, that's a whole other subject. So, no, but if, technically, in short, means was the 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 uh, the, the the crime right, in this case because if mm -hmm. you've been arrested, the misconduct mm -hmm. a result or a manifestation of the, the child's, child's disability. disability. That's it in a very simple nutshell. Right. What's what's tricky here is that for criminal purposes, it's it's a crime and you have right. to be convicted of a crime. But in a school context. The misconduct can just be the alleged misconduct. It's almost like there's a presumption of guilt in school, in my experience, as opposed to your rights in a criminal defense. So it's it's a little difficult because sometimes this kid's saying, "I didn't even do it," and now <laughs> I'm being now I'm supposed to decide. The team's supposed to decide whether it was a result of my disability, something I'm not even right. saying I did. Now, if a student gets arrested and it has nothing to do with school, it didn't happen at school grounds. 
It didn't happen as a school sponsored activity. It was completely unrelated to school in every way, maybe in a totally different state for that matter. Okay. okay. If that happens, then there is another question that I think a parent needs to ask, which is, is is my child, is something happening in their educational environment or because of their disability that is putting them in a position where they are getting themselves into trouble right. a lot? And, you know, and again, people get arrested for things they didn't do. I don't want to assume that the kid did it. But mm -hmm. in the event that actually the kid was engaged in some risky or inappropriate illegal activity, as a parent, you might want to say, let's back up here. Yeah. And is my child now engaging in high risk behavior because they're frustrated in school, their other underlying disabilities right. not being remediated or addressed? Then it may be the next step is to, for you to ask for an IEP meeting right. so that you can talk about programming. And perhaps further evaluations to identify right. an area that has not been identified yet. This is a very complicated issue, clearly, mm -hmm. um, but we certainly want you to know that if your child has been arrested, as Jen said, um, the first step should be to call a criminal defense attorney, or if you're not in a position to hire one, you're, you're entitled to a public defender. And let's hope it doesn't happen. Yeah.